How's it going, Internet? I hope you're having a wonderful evening tonight. It is time to do some more animation, time to get creative, time to get imaginative, time to play with this wonderful art and medium that is the world of animation. I hope you guys are just having a great day today. I'm really, uh, really excited to be able to talk to you again. Um, so for today's inspiration, uh, it comes from one of my favorites. I have my, uh, what do I call it, my uh, elusive, magnificent... 11 or 12 or whatever it is. I gotta come up with a good name, but he is in my top favorite uh, creative people. Uh, definitely in my list. This is Kerry Nord, and if you're not familiar with him, um, he's a great comic book artist, and he, how I first came across um, him was through uh, the Conan series by Dark Horse a while ago, so I thought I'd share a little bit of um, the art from that with you, which is a free PDF comic that you can grab off of um, Dark Horse's website as well, so if you want to check it out and read it for yourself, definitely do that. But he, um, I found an interview with him, um, and he uh, was talking about how he got into the industry and how he got into where he was at, and I thought there was a good quote that um, I pulled from that. From there, I was a sponge with anything that had to do with comics, especially about drawing comics or getting into the business. I picked up every piece of literature on it I could find, and it was before the internet, so that was a chore to do that. And I think that's a good way to um, approach whatever it is uh, that you're, whatever field you're getting into as a creative person is to just try and and not really pigeon yourself with, okay, well, I got one book and, you know, now I know everything. No, like, branch out, look into different areas of that creative field and try and find everything. Because as we're talking a lot about animation, I really think illustration, I think sculpting and modeling, rendering, you know, After Effects, there's so many different um, venues, uh, like looking at, you know, figure drawing and all these different things and just trying to soak up all that information like a sponge, like uh, he was saying, and just try to absorb it all and get, you know, find the things that really stick and resonate with you and use that a lot. And, you know, the stuff that doesn't, maybe come back to it, maybe it will later, but just try and get as many different inputs that you can while you're understanding and building and learning. I think that's really important. And then just for visuals, I wanted to show you a couple of, um, I just love his line work. He's He's got a mastery of, of form. I, I really enjoy um, just the, 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 the line work that he does is just so great. Oh, I just really, I really like his silhouettes. He's one of my all-time favorites um, as far as illustration goes, and I, I don't hear a lot of people really singing his praise too much, but I mean, look at the expressions that he can get, and that it's just a, uh, you know, when we talk about the illusion of life a lot, and I feel like, you know, even this is, though this is an animation where it's moving and everything, I really feel like the characters that, um, that he illustrates really come to life and, and have a, a feeling of character and realness behind them i mean just look at this those great poses it's there's so much life to it it feels like you know you're capturing it right in the middle of the movement that you can almost know what the next frame would be if it was an animation or anything and just the layout of his pages and how he does things he's, he's a great um great great illustrator i really love his conan run unfortunately i don't think he's working with um conan anymore uh but if you can pick up uh, the first, I think it's like the first three or four volumes of Conan, I think they're amazingly drawn, and the coloring is beautiful, and the story's really good too, but just the illustration in there is just, it's top notch. I'd say as far as if you ever wanted to uh, introduce someone into uh, comics, I would say this is a great place to start. All right, that being said, let's get into animation uh, for today. I could look at his stuff for hours, and I definitely recommend, I'll throw it in the um, comments down below. You know, give his stuff a look. It's great. Um, so for today, this is uh, a the minnow rig that I grabbed off of SonicTK.com. The information will be down below if you want to grab it. It's a free rig that you can download, and we're going to be using uh, Maya 2014. And if you're not familiar with this series, what we do is uh, give ourselves anywhere from about 45 minutes to two hours, depending on the rig, depending on the idea we're going with depending on if we get any hiccups or anything along the way as well, give ourselves about 48 frames and kind of see what we can come up with. We talk a little bit about um, 
instruction and in how to sometimes it's more about the creative process or troubleshooting when stuff gets difficult or pushing poses or lots of different stuff and just uh, kind of try and delve into um, the creative process as a whole and animation and I just want to make a resource for people out there who are either um, you know at home indie animators who kind of are feeling lonely out there and want to feel like they have a buddy who's in the animation trenches with them you know every day I try and put out videos for them and uh, also for beginners or kind of intermediates um, as well so that uh, you can kind of learn some stuff and and get a feeling um, kind of outside of a classroom where they might give you you know an hour-long lecture and then kind of just tell you to go do it this is more of like an over-the-shoulder kind of talk about like why we're doing things and how we're doing things and the approaches and everything too so uh, I hope you guys like this series. With that being said, I'm rambling a ton. It's probably been a bunch of time already, and we haven't even done the animating yet. So that being said, let's go ahead and create a polygon primitives cube. And drag that down just so we have a base to start off with. And let's go ahead and turn our textures off by hitting 5 on our keyboard. And let's get into this guy. Now, I was kind of thinking for this guy, we'd have him uh, walk backwards and kind of do a little bit of hand dancing. I thought that would be fun, kind of like a little bit of thing like that, if we could get that idea working. I think it would be fun. He's a very cute little character. And we haven't really done anything for uh, for backwards, going backwards. I don't think I've done... Uh, it's, which is pretty much the same approach as going forwards. You're just going the opposite direction, but a little bit different. I thought it would be a nice way to mix it up here. I'm doing the usual of what we do. And usually I try to rotate where it's just... Um, you know, just on the rotate Y or just on the rotate Z or just on the rotate X, especially when starting out, so that you make sure that uh, you can keep um, your curves clean and everything, so you're not using two curves to get um, one angle uh, that you want. But sometimes you can't get that just ex just exactly right. So we'll go ahead and grab the uh, main controller here. And I think we'll splash the hips in a little bit and the chest in. I think we want to roll those shoulders forward if we can. Here. Which means we're going to go ahead and take that out a little bit. It's important to get a good starting pose um, with any sort of a walk. You don't want it to you want it to have character right away from the first thing, so someone can just see one frame of it and already kind of get a glimpse for what kind of a character it is or what um, have an idea of what might be occurring right away. So you always have an instant kind of storytelling pose. So we want to go ahead and definitely do that. too much about the hands yet because we'll get that movement uh, working once we've got our uh, basic movement with the legs going on. Sorry about that. Let's get into just setting up this first initial pose here. So I want to be able to bend the hand. So you know what? I think uh, so I don't want to get too much d deformation between the uh, hand and the like, forearm here.
just really find a different approach for this. See if it's just got that kind of funky deformer. Excuse me. Okay, let's just uh, kind of start with that. We'll get into it once we get the animation really working. Let's go ahead and save our, turn our grid off, and file, save scene as, and takes a second in 2014, great program, but a little bit slower than some of the older versions, but there's a lot more features and everything too, which is really nice as well. And they do have, I believe, a 2016 minnow. Don't forget to save multiple versions and to save often when you're animating as well. And let's see. Do a little bit of rotate down and let's try rotate. So I want to open these eyes here. Just want to try and get a good starting pose everywhere throughout. there's a way to kind of, there's a little bit of deformation in there, a little bit of bubbling, but I think we can still make it work without. Alright, so let's make sure that we've got only our nerve curves, nerve surfaces, and polygons selected. Let's grab everything, and let's give us only 48 frames to work with, since that's where we're going to be starting from. Go from zero, and we'll set a key, hit S on the keyboard. second here for to register for some reason taking a little bit longer than usual and okay there we go and let's get started building the foundation of this walk here let's go to level 12 
see if the difference between them is about the same. Probably a little bit further back on that foot. And I haven't decided if we want to do almost like a moonwalk kind of thing too with the feet. And where we let them slide. Or if we want to pick them up. But I think we'll probably pick them up. But it's an idea. But I feel like that might not be the strongest idea. I want the focus to kind of be on those arms if we can get them to work. If we don't get them as strong as we want, then maybe we'll put that in instead. back and we're just building the foundation for our walk we'll go ahead and finesse it up a little bit more but the first thing you want to do is get the uh, feet and the hips working and then once those are working you've got a good bulk of your walk a little bit further back a little bit further back you want to make sure that we're retaining um, balance in the character as well I think he's probably a little too far forward and we'll set that there and move it back. A little bit further back. And let's go ahead and go into Window Animation Editors, Graph Editor, and let's look at our Translate Z. Let's uh, make that a constant here. So this is going to be our movement from. Uh, right to left here. And as you notice too, um, usually if you've watched some of the other videos, we say left to right and the uh, translation shows a positive and this one shows a negative because we're going in reverse. And it does depend on how the rig's set up and how the uh, everything's laid out in your scene file, but that should be pretty normal is that you'll go into the positives when you're going uh, left to right and the negatives when you're going right to left for most uh, rigs. Alright, I can already see it being a fun walk already. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a little bit of that passing position in. I don't think we're going to need it to be too much. Make sure we're setting our keys again. Just hit S again on those ones that we already have set, just in case we didn't key everything there. That way we make sure that up goes back down here. Let's see. Now doing something like this where you'd have it slide on one foot would be where you were like favoring a foot or there might be something wrong with you know that foot or something. So that's always something you can't do, but I don't think we want to do that for this one. But it always depends on what you're going with, so don't be afraid to try new things if you're just getting into animation play with it. Walks, I think, are the like foundation of um, learning and experimenting with animation. You can really get a lot um, of character out of a walk. I find that that's, um, you know, if you really want to know what a character is like, do a, a walk or a walk cycle or um, start off there. And you can get a lot of feel and personality from there and kind of understand, you know, either A, a different rig or B, a different character or, you know, a different way to animate than you maybe were doing before. And I definitely want to do a good amount of up and down here. But on this one, let's go ahead and make the, uh, let's try doing the passing position, the up position. Sorry, the passing position, the down position, and the contact to the uh, up position. So that way it'll have a little bit of a dip down instead of a pull up. Which is kind of opposite than most people walk, but it should give us a little bit more bounce. I would think. We could even do a double bounce on here, which would be... Uh, but yeah, I think that was a fun way to go with this. If you'll notice, sometimes when if you're um, watching my video down below over here, um, a lot of times I catch myself like when I'm doing the hips, I'll kind of dip down a little bit, or if I want to, you know, make a facial expression on a character, I'll tend to do the face that I uh, want to get in there for some reason. It uh, I feel like when you do that, or when you have that synergy between. 
um, your body and your animation, I feel like it gives a little bit of a stronger um, feel to it. It gives it some, an element of life that I don't think if you're just, I'm always animating, animate, animate. But if you're actually animated while you're animating, I feel like it, at least for myself, it helps to energize uh, my work more so than if I'm, I can always tell when I'm tired. Um, I'm not as on with my work. Even if it's just a feeling, I think it tends to come through in your work if you're energized while you're working or if you're in a good mood, I think that um, I was talking, I don't know if I've talked about this on here before, but I was talking to uh, Arbitrary Jane on Twitter as a writer um, about do a little bit of rotate in the hips here too, just to favor those down position steps. Um, but I was talking to her about, uh, you know, kind of maybe being in a, a negative place for that day and how that affects your work and how to um, how to change that around or if you should dwell in that or, or what. But I tend to find that when I'm in a negative place. Um, not necessarily like super depressed or anything, but if I'm just frustrated about the day or things haven't been going exactly the way that I wanted, that I find that um, my work suffers as well. If I have more of a positive energy or an upbeat energy, um, I tend to be able to, to uh, get the muses uh, to blend the thoughts in my mind to the ideas on paper or in maya or whatever it is so let me know um down below what you think about that if you think um i mean there there is also uh you know in the same regard i imagine if you're doing a really angry or violent or frustrated scene or something maybe you'd want to live in that frustration kind of a world but i still think you, you'd want to I don't know. Let me know down below in the comments what you think about that. If you think while you're creating, um, if you try to stay, you know, positive and what kind of things you do to get in those moods. I know for myself, um, if I throw on, you know, a, an album that I like or, uh, you know, in the background while I'm working, which some people say don't listen to music while you work, um, which, I don't know, sometimes I think there's... Uh, there's good that can come to listening to music while creating. Other times I do think, you know, just sitting down and, and concentrating on what you're working and trying to have no distractions really helps too. Uh, when I was growing up in our house, we weren't allowed to listen to uh, music while we did our, our homework. And I don't know, I always, uh, m a lot of the time I tend to listen to music these days. But I think there is something to uh, to not listening to music as well. So it depends. I guess it kind of just depends on your mood. Uh, I know, uh, and I've talked about this a little bit before, but in the uh, Animator's Survival Kit, Richard Williams talks about an experience with um, Milk Call that he had, um, where he asked him b about... Uh, and right now we're just offsetting the chest versus the hips. We have the hips favoring that foot forward, so the uh, arms are going to favor that one forward. Um, but he talked to Milk Hall about, uh, you know, what kind of music that he liked to listen to or what. And then uh, there's a illustration in there. Shoot, I guess if I had it handy, but I don't. I mean, I do, but I, I'd have to look through all the pages and everything too. Um, about uh, Milk Call yelling, and Milk Call, uh, I think I've talked about him here before. He's, one of, uh, he's a great Disney animator. Uh, he did the Sheriff of Nottingham and uh, Rescuers Down Under the. Um, I want to say it's Madame Mim, but that's the other one. Uh, let me know down in the comments why I can't think of this name. Uh, but there's a video I did a couple days back that has that in there. Metamedusa, 
So anyways, but he uh, he answered uh, Richard Williams back that uh, I'm something to the effect of, don't, don't say this is a, an exact quote, but I'm not smart enough to be able to concentrate on my work and listen to music at the same time. And if someone that's a master of their craft, you know, thinks that, then there's something to it. But I also think there's a different variation between the way people's brains work now versus than they did in, uh, you know, the 50s or so. We're so inundated with uh, light and sound and music and commercials and television and, and YouTube and all that stuff all the time that I think sometimes it's almost more unnerving to not have sound going around in the background. So that would almost break your concentration more, which is a weird thing, but I think there's something to that. But let me know down in the comments what you think down below, if that's something that you do while you're creating, if you listen to uh, a lot of music, or if you uh, tend to work in silence. It's kind of working. I want to definitely polish that up, but I think the idea is there. And then we're definitely going to offset, you know, the elbow from the hand. to use uh, two curves on this to kind of get the feeling we want, I think. But that's okay. But usually I like to be able to do it just on one, like just on the rotate Y would be this, and then the rotate Z would be this, and rotate X would be that. But um, because of the way this rig's set up, it's kind of a little bit... i got to use a couple different curves to get what we need, but that's okay. A 
work with what we're given. switching so have to get in there and really set that up the way we want it. We're going to have to do it, bury it a little bit so that we get chair, right over chair. Do a nice round, and if we were just on one curve that we could get, that would be a lot easier. Okay, let's try doing your successor. Right? Grab this one and this one. Let's go ahead and delay that frame. We need a little more 
it's still not working. Two frames, maybe. Okay, let's try getting just getting the other arm. Maybe a little different from the initial idea, but I think the feeling of that idea is still there. Let's see. Let's see. Let's turn on our shaders. And now we turn back off again. Okay, now let's get into those fingers here. We can really exaggerate these because this is like a fish kind of a dude, so he can have really kind of floppier fingers, that's okay. second. Okay. Let's go in here. And let's go ahead and grab these fingers and let's start playing with them here. Make sure we grab all of them. I like this little guy. He's fun. It's definitely a cute rig. I'm going to save our file here. Control S. 
and save that and let's go ahead and grab the um, mid and tips from all the fingers and we're going to delay those a frame and we're going to grab all the tips as well we're going to delay those a frame and then let's go ahead and lead the pat by a frame so we'll push that one frame forward and we'll go ahead and grab all these and we'll pull that one frame back and that'll just mix up the movement a little bit two frames, let's just keep it a one frame in variation. And let's go ahead and grab these two. And let's delay those a frame. And grab these two. and we'll lead by frame with that. Let's go ahead and watch that. And this the, here's the net controller here. Leave it to this guy. And let's go ahead and add a little bit of tip over delay that by a frame or two just so there's a little bit of movement in the head we don't need a lot because there's a lot in the chest already going on which will affect the head but a little bit will help us Actually, let's tone that down even more. It's like I said, I don't really want a lot, but we want there to feel like there's some movement in the head. And then let's go ahead and do a little bit of rotate X so that it doesn't feel like it's only moving uh, from side to side, but also there's a little tilt by the chin. Let's go ahead and just take everything we have and we'll tone that down even more. Like I said, it's just a little too busy. For the head. I like the idea behind it, but I think it's just a little too much. Okay, let's go ahead and check that now. Jaw. Let's see if we can give a little bit of uh, delay on the jaw by a couple of frames, and that'll help loosen that head up as well. Okay, let's give us two or three frames, maybe. Let's go three. Feel it a little bit. Let's go ahead and amp that up a lot more. Let's go ahead and watch it now. And let's also let's see. lip press. About this one, is that a lip press? Yeah, it does. Okay. 
past this point. Well, I don't have any, can't go any further down. I guess we could go down the flat. rotate doesn't really do too much. Could do a little bit of sway there. Just to make it feel like there's weight in that as well. Zero. Zero and zero. Okay, let's see if that just makes it feel a little more fleshy on that nose there. And then so that brown. Just do a little bit of sway on those two. Let's see. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Gotta do them separately, but that's okay. And just a little bit, just to help keep that head feeling fleshy. Let's go ahead and delay that two frames. Let's see. And just help keep that uh, feeling of fleshiness to it so it's not so rigid. Let's go ahead and delay that uh, three frames or so. this one. And let's turn our nerve curve, or our, uh, yeah, our curves off and our textures on and see how that plays out. In that. See, just a little bit. I think I might like to leave that uh, mouth open a little more though.
caution stretch there. A little bit of tilt as well. Squash and stretch goes a long way, so I, got, I might tone that down a little bit. But I like the idea of keeping that head really loose. Let's go ahead and add these eyelids and really kick them up. So it feels more playful. Open the eye more. So we got a really kind of feel of uh, eye contact straight at the character. And then one thing we might do is do like a kind of a blink. do it on the bottoms as well. And we don't want them to hit on the same frame either. do a little bit on the hat as well. Delay this by about three frames. And then we'll go to zero. Let's see. And we'll probably have to tone that down a lot, but let's delay it uh, three frames. Let's see how it feels. Yeah. Okay, but let's really tone that down. So let's grab. Uh, translate axes and we'll just kick them way down and kind of even them out a little bit more as well. And what was that? Rotate Z. 
We just need a little bit of this. Not a lot. So let's see. Just so it doesn't feel like it's too stuck to his head in one position. We could pull the shirt to let the shirt go a little bit, just a little bit, so there's a little life in that shirt there. Hey, we got it. Why not use it, right? It's working pretty well. The only thing we need is we need to do a little bit of uh, fixing up on the feet. So let's go ahead and rotate that down at X. Yeah, rotate that down at X. And then is there like a ball? There's a toe. So we'll go ahead and drag that toe down, lift it up. Just adds a little bit of overlap and keep alive and that foot so the steps feel a little better. And let's go to this one, do a little bit of rotate X, and a little bit of toe drag, and lift that toe up, and we'll plop it down. We do it on two frames. We could do it on one if we wanted it to feel heavier, but it doesn't need to. And this isn't something that's gonna like really make or break the shot, but it's definitely gonna keep those feet feeling a little bit better. Where I felt like they were a little bit more. And then let's do a little bit of animation on the thumbs as well. Just a little bit. so that it's not feeling so super stiff. There's a little bit of give in that as well. Let's go ahead and watch that now. Oh, there's just a little bit of a feel to it. And not too much, because I like the feel of how these hands are working. Let's go ahead and watch that now. Oh, you know what I did want to do? Okay, let me save what this is. And I think the reason we didn't put a texture on that tongue. So let's see if we can't go into a uh, window, outliner. Let's do a minnow. We've got it. Uh, let's right click on here and add a new material, a Lambert. And then we're going to go into here and into our color and click this little um, white and black checker box here and go into file. And then uh, it's nice with this rig, they give you the textures as well. So it's a little bit of a bigger file when you download it. Um, but I found that you had to assign the textures and everything to it. So just didn't do the tongue for some reason. There we go. Now we got a little bit of a tongue there. 
So let's go ahead and save it, and then let's see if we can get a little bit of movement in the tunnel. Just a little bit. Like I said, I feel like everything's kind of working all right, but if we could do a little bit of tongue action. I don't know if I want to say tongue action on there, but uh, it might feel good too. Rotate D. Just a little bit. Rotate D. might be a little too much. So let's go ahead and scale it back a little bit. And let's delay it uh, three frames. Let's see. And then let's go ahead and also take tongue three, tongue two, and tongue one. Let's delay that a frame. So there's a little bit of successive movement as well throughout it. So now if we grab everything, it should be right there. Let's see how that works. So that way there's a little bit of a... Let's take the tip of the tongue. A nice curve to it. And then 17. Just so we get that nice curve there. And then 29. And then maybe about 41. Let's go ahead and watch that there. I think that's all working okay, but let's go ahead and just tone everything down. We don't need that much movement in the tongue. Just a little bit goes a long way here. So let's go ahead and grab Rotate Z. Let's turn our nerve curves on. That's feeling pretty fun. I like this little guy. Alright, I think that's a good place to call it for today. Definitely have some fun, and this guy's got a little dance going on. Dance walking. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments below. If there's things that you would have done different. If you like this idea. If you like this rig. If you try out different tests with this rig as well. Let me know. Share it, um, share it back, and we can always talk about it and everything as well. Um, yeah, so if you do like what we're doing here, go ahead and throw some th thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, because we'll keep doing more animation and talking about it, and getting into the creative process, and getting into inspiration, and just remember um, what we were talking about earlier, 
to try to be like a sponge and soak up as much as you can of whatever field that you're in. Um, try and do, uh, you know, get as many different experiences, meet as many different people, read as many books as you can on the subject. Try to get all these different uh, opinions and views on that uh, field that you're working in and then see what sticks with you and what resonates with you and use that to, as your building stones to uh, keep improving every day. So thanks a lot. You guys are awesome. You're amazing. And we will see you all uh, tomorrow for some more animation.